Sometimes when we're working out compound interest, the interest period is not for just a once-off once payment in a year, but rather it's compounded um, more than once a year. For example, in these three questions, we're going to have a look at where interest is paid monthly, where interest is also paid quarterly, and we might just repair that spelling in your books, and also where it's paid six monthly. So let's have a look and see how the formula can be adapted. Now remember that our formula stays the same, that's the amount of principal and the interest at the end, is the amount that you put in, that's the principal, one plus. Now we've got R, which is the interest rate, as a percentage, and N is the number of time periods. So the formula itself doesn't change, but there are two numbers that will change when we're compounding more than once a year. Let's have a look at the first one. In this case, the time period is monthly. So when we work out our interest rate, we take R to be the 9% but we divide it by 12. So it's actually 9 twelfths percent per month. Now what this means is that if we convert this to a decimal as a percentage, we get 0.75% interest every month, per month. And that's the trick. We've got to make sure we divide the interest rate for the year by the number of time periods, in this case 12. Now, we also need to work out the number of payments of interest that we receive. So for five years, every year we receive 12 interest payments. So it's times 12 months. So the total number of payments is 60. That means we'll have one each, each month for 60 months. That's five years. And so our final answer, A, the amount, would be our amount invested, $10,000. And in our brackets, we've got one plus. Now remember, our interest rate is 0 0.75 per month over 100 and our number of years is still 5 but because we receive payment each month our payment period is totally 60 payment periods. So let's finish this off. You can check this with your calculator. $10,000 that would be 1.0075 to the power of 60 and our final answer, this is the amount of principal and interest you'll find is $15,656.81. All right, what about quarterly? Well, we once again for this one, I better put B here so we can see and I'll put A over here. Quarterly. Well, the thing about quarterly is that R would be our interest rate, 9%, divided by how many quarters there are in a year, in this case four. So that's now our quarterly interest rate. So R is 9 over 4% per quarter. All right, now we can go ahead and work this out as a decimal. 9 divided by 4 is 2.25% interest. Once again, that's per quarter. And N, the number of time periods, is going to be 5 years, but because we get paid the interest every quarter, we times it by 4, so N becomes 20 
20 quarters altogether or 20 payment periods. So timesing this out, we get 20 quarters and we're ready now to substitute into our formula. So A will be $10,000 as on the left hand formula that we've got. Now it's one and the interest rate has changed because it's quarterly, 2.25 over 100, that turns it into a decimal and the number of time periods is 20. So when we work this out, we get $10,000 times by 1.0225 to the power of 20. So our final amount is $15,000 six hundred and five dollars and nine cents now it's interesting to notice this that the same amount invested gets more when it's compounded monthly than it's compounded quarterly and and that's because your interest accrues a little quicker and you can see there's a considerable difference between the two and we would imagine six monthly if you think about it the number will be less again because it's compounded twice a year instead of four or 12 times a year. So let's have a look at this final one. This will be C for six monthly. So let's have a look at the interest rate. The interest rate is 9%, but it happens twice a year. So there's our interest rate of 9.2%. That's per six months, per six months turning that into a, a decimal 4.5 percent per six months and our time period in is equal to five years and remember it happens twice a year now so we're going to have not five but ten um, payment period ten six monthly period so we can put here six now we better be careful there I'll just delete that we don't want to confuse that and get 106 so I'll say 10 six monthly times or periods all right so now we can put in our formula and we get a there's our ten thousand dollars one plus our interest rate of 4.5 over 100 and it's for 10 periods of time totals $10,000 it's 1.045 and that's to the power of 10 and our final answer that's the total amount including our principal and interest is $15,529.69 and you'll notice that it gets less simply because the interest isn't paid as frequently so we would imagine for a once a payment once a year payment that that it would be less again and that would be correct all right let's have a look at another situation here it says it's possible to obtain a cash advance. Now a cash advance is just taking money out of your credit card as cash rather than just buying something. But of course it does cost quite a lot of money. And here it is. The interest charged on a cash advance of $400. It only goes for 27 days. The interest rate is 16%. But the interesting thing is that the interest is charged daily. There's a daily compounding effect. So, let's have a look at this one. The daily interest rate is going to be equal to 16%, which is our annual interest rate, divided by 365, the number of days in a year. 
and there's our percent. So it's no different, it's just going to be compounded every single day. So the formula is going to be A equals the principal, now it's $400, so we'll put that in there, 1 plus, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in as another bracket, so I'll put it in square brackets, there's our 16 over 365 and we're going to divide that by 100 remember now the reason I've done it like this is because it's going to be a very very small number and we really need to do this with our calculator um, in one step to avoid rounding errors and so on now what would be the number up here it's daily and actually they've given us the number of days so we can just write that as 27 because we've converted this already to a daily interest rate and remember the divide by changes it to the decimal that we want. Now I won't write out all of this but I will give you the answer. The total amount is $404.76. You need to make sure you can put that into your calculator and get that answer. Even if you need to pause for a minute to try that. What about the interest charge because it's actually asking calculate the interest charge. So the interest for this cash advance is the amount that you're going to have as your A. Remember, take off the amount that you were given in your cash advance, which is $400. And it turns out for 27 days, you pay interest of $4, excuse me, $4.76. So that's how these sorts of charges um, come about. All right, so what we need to look, look at for these ones is number one, how often is the interest paid? And make sure that we modify two things, the interest rate per period, and secondly, the number of time periods that occur.